Dick and leaf insects. They're the masters of disguise in the natural world. There's over 3,000 species that occur all the way around the world, mainly in tropical and subtropical areas, but also in some temperate areas, pretty much everywhere except the high latitudes in Antarctica. They occur in all shapes and sizes. This is one of the smallest in the world. It lives on the rainforest floor. And this is one of the biggest, but they actually occur even bigger than this. They get up to half a metre long. In between those two extremes, stick insects come in an extraordinary variety of shapes and sizes. And some are really colourful. Like Peruvian fern stick insects. Here's a few examples. This one is called Heteropteryx dilatata, and she lives on leaves in the Malaysian rainforest. And you can just imagine in the jungle canopy, they're virtually invisible from other animals. And in fact, their scientific name, Phasmids, that's exactly what it means, derived from the word phantom, or ghost insects, because they hide so well. Some of them have armor plates, like this one, Eurocanthi calcarata and these live down in the forest floor. They have black plates of armor all over them. And others often look like other animals. This one, the Maclay spectra, or Ecstatosoma taratum, can curl her, her tail forward. It's said to resemble a scorpion. But she can also hang in leaves and look just like leaves. And all the little flanges on her limbs make her almost invisible. Perhaps the best camouflage belongs to the leaf insects. The adults have wings that look exactly like leaves, as well as legs that are flattened and leaf-like. Young leaf insects don't yet have wings, but they are still almost invisible. Their whole body is flattened and has the color and texture of a leaf. And like the adults, they also break up their shape with flattened legs. Many of them don't have wings, especially the females, such as this one here, or the wings are tiny and just vestigial, just little tiny wings there. Even tiny wings can be used in defense, a flash of bright color to startle an enemy. But a few can actually fly, and particularly the males. This little boy here, I very gently show you. He has purple wings. And incredibly, the males and the females of the same species can look completely different. This actually is the male of this species, Heteropteryx dilatata. The female is basically just an egg machine. She lays hundreds and hundreds of eggs throughout her lifetime, whereas the male has to find the female, of course, to mate. So he needs those wings to find her in the canopy, but quite how he can see the, the females from their camouflage, I honestly don't know. But somehow they do. Many of them are harmless. In fact, most of them are harmless. But a few do actually have spurs on their back legs. This one here is the male Eurocanthic calcarata. And you can see here on the back legs, they have ferocious big spines. And that's actually what their Latin name means. Calcarata, the spined one. And those spines are used for any attacking animals. Many stick insects are covered in sharp spines to deter any predators that see through their camouflage.
all stick insects start life as tiny little eggs like these ones here. Let's have a little look. The eggs of each species are totally different in shape and colour and some of them actually mimic seeds. But eventually, out pop little nymphs, just like this one. And they grow little by little over a few months and every few weeks they shed their skin. Like all arthropods, they have to grow by casting off their hard exoskeleton. And they climb out of the back and each time they do this, they, they grow, they jump in size and grow. And amazingly, they can even lose legs and every time they shed their skin, they can regenerate those legs. Little by little, they finally get to adult size. Stick insects make great pets, especially for young people, for children, and they can help inspire young minds to become enthusiastic about nature and learn about science and conservation. This species is one of the easiest of all. It's called the Indian stick insect, or Corosius morosis. And it's one of the most stick-like of all. It really does look just like a stick, so it's great for, for learning about camouflage. They're so easy to keep. All you need is basically a container or a tank like this one. And it's a good idea to have the tank. Its vertical height should be several times the length of the stick insect so that when it sheds its skin, it can hang down and um, escape from the shedding skin process without harm. All then you need is the food plant and each species of stick insect has its own specific requirement for the food plants uh, that it eats. This one likes privet which is really easy to find in hedgerows in, in many countries. So all you really need then is some leaves of privet, a few adult stick insects that'll start your colony, and all you then need to do is pop them in on their food plants and they'll eat and do the rest. It's a, always a good idea to line the bottom of your tank with a bit of damp, damp toilet paper or damp kitchen roll that allows a little bit of humidity. It shouldn't be wet. They'll drop their uh, eggs, their little eggs and droppings down at the bottom of the tank and every two or three weeks it's a good idea to take out the paper, change it and separate the eggs out from the droppings and keep the eggs in a, a warm place, often on tissue paper in a little match box or small container. They'll generally hatch in three, four-ish months and have lots of tiny little baby nymphs. And you can put the nymphs straight back with the adults. They're, they're absolutely fine together. And that's really all you need to, to keep stick insects. For more information, please visit the Weird and Wonderful Pets website where you can download information PDFs and secure your copy of the accompanying book.